All right, let's get started with our next app that you're supposed to create. This one is for uh, the next day, so let's go to the schedule. And it looks like we did Friday, spring break, yay! And here we go, ball bounce. Ball bounce is the next one, so I'm going to click on it and open it. By now, you should have MIT App Inventor open already. Remember, it opens to our last one, so you'll see the talk to me. So we're going to go to projects, start new project. This one's going to be called bounce, ball bounce, underscore, and put your name in there. And a new one should pop up. Sweet. All right. Let's get working. So we're going to, we already have new. We already have the new name. Now let's get started right away. So this is the first time we're going to be using a canvas in our media drawer. Um, we're going to go to Drawing and Animations, and we're going to include a canvas. Now, let's first just go and drag the canvas in. So find Media Drawer. There it is. We'll use canvases quite a bit here in, uh, oops, Drawing and Animations, sorry. We'll be using this quite a bit this, this quarter. All right. Now we're going to go to Set the Screen so that it does not scroll. Well, how do we do that? Well, what we have to do is it says default setting an app. Oops, did we miss something? No, they just don't show you the rest. So I'll show you what to do. The default setting for App Inventor is that the screen of your app will be scrollable, which means that you can scroll up and down on your screen um, and the user interface can go beyond the limit. Well, since we're using a canvas, we want to make sure it's limited to just the screen that you see. So you have to turn off the scrollable setting. So we're going to uncheck the box so that the screen doesn't scroll. This will allow us to make the canvas fill the whole screen. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's here in screen one. We'll go here to properties. And you'll see scrollable um, is not marked. So we're actually okay. Good. That's all it was for that one. So now we'll go down and it says change the height and width of the canvas. Okay, here we go. So we're going to click on canvas and then we're going to make sure that we select height to be fill parent and the width, we're going to do the same with the width. So this is where we start to change the size. Right now this is what you see for the canvas. So I'm going to click on canvas and for height we can click fill parent. That means it fills the parent space that we have. So we'll see the height will fill the whole screen. And now we're going to do the same with the width. Fill parent. Fill the whole screen. So as you can see, there's some other things we can do. We can always make it by how many pixels are on the screen. That's how many little bitty dots. Make it across and make it down. Or percent. Automatic, you saw, just made small. We don't want that. So we want fill parent. All right. So now that we have that set up, what's the next step? Next, it wants us to add a ball. So we're going to go into the drawing animation, and we're going to click ball. Then we're going to go over here, and it wants us in the properties to change the radius to 15. So let's see if we can figure that all out. We're still in the drawing and animation page, so we're going to grab the ball, click and drag it. doesn't matter where. We can put it wherever we want. But I do want to point out something for you, so I'm going to put it here. Let's change the radius from 5 to 15. Click off it. Now we have a bigger ball. Now look down here. You see these X, Y, and Z? Z is always going to be 1 because that's 3-dimensional. But these are your coordinates, your ordered pairs, 98, 15. What that means is 0, 0, our origin is right here, right here on the edge of the screen. So what it's saying is the X goes over. So to go over to this little top left corner, that is 98 pixels over. And if we scroll down from the top down, that's your Y. So X goes across, Y goes down. This is at 98, 15, right at that little spot right there. Interesting to know because if you ever want to set your sprite in a certain spot, those are the things you need to be aware of. We're just going to leave our ball right there. Okay, we got everything set up right. Now it wants us to go to blocks. You're going to be like, this is it? This is all our app is? Yeah. It's kind of fun, though. So we're going to go to blocks. Now we're going to open the ball one drawer to view the ball's blocks. 
So we're going to click on ball one, and we're going to see all the apps here. What we're going to want to click, though, it says here is choose the block that says win ball one dot flung. That's this one here. And we're going to drop it into the workspace. Flung user refers to the user making a fling gesture. So that would be like this. Flick. Flick. That's your flung. Okay. That's click. That's click. That's flung. Those are the different things that we've done so far. Let me turn this on, by the way. We'll get our app ready. There we go. You can do the same with yours. Pause if you need to. All right. And then what we're going to do is just put that down there so we can move on from that spot. So go here to the ball. We're going to look for flung and just drag that anywhere on here. Short and simple. Okay. Next it says open the ball drawer and we're going to scroll down till we get the list of blocks or different activities here, the setters. We're going to need uh, ball one dot heading and set ball one speed. So let's pull these two out and then just leave them there until it tells us what to do. So go down here. We're going to need setting and speed. Well, here's speed. And ball one. Did it say heading or setting? I think it said heading. Yeah, heading. I'm confusing myself. <laughs> now you see how they have these red X's? That means there's an error. So if I click on it, it says this block needs a value. It means it needs to be connected to something. So we know that. We know it's a mistake. We'll get to it in a second. But it is good to know it gives you these warnings down here. Always lets you know if there's something wrong. Okay, let's scroll down. Now what it wants us to do is it wants us to plug the ball speed and the ball heading into the fling event handler. Let's make sure we have them in the right order too. So first the speed and then heading. So I'm going to drag the speed until it clicks. Heading right under there and you can see that it shows you where to put it. If it doesn't work right, it'll let you know it'll bounce out. Okay. So next here we set, it says set the ball speed to the same as the fling gesture speed. So we're going to mouse over the speed thing here and the parameter for ball one flung, we're going to get it to just be get speed. So whatever speed you're flinging with your finger is the speed it's going to have. We're not going to set a specific speed. We're just going to let it fling as hard as you actually fling it with your finger. So we're going to set, it says we're going to set the speed for that one, get speed. So let's go ahead and do that. And then for the heading one, we're going to get heading. So what that means is we're going to mouse over and it's always going to get the heading as where it is. So it's kind of always knowing where the ball is and it's just going to allow it to go in a straight line. So let's go ahead and do those. So up here we're going to go, we're going to mouse over where it says speed. You see that I don't click anything or touch anything, these show up. So now I can grab this one and click it and we're going to put it in that getter. And now we're going to do click off, we're going to do the same thing with heading. Scroll over slowly and click in there. One thing I probably haven't said till this point is it works better if you have a mouse. So just think about if you have a mouse at home, use that. Okay. Now it wants us to test it out. Um, good habit while building our apps is to test things as we go. So let's see if everything's working the way we want it to. All right. I almost gave away the hint there. So we're going to go over to our tablet. I'm going to scan with the QR code. I'm going to go up to App Inventor, and I'm going to go to Connect, AI Companion, bring my tablet over, scan the QR, should be talking to each other, which it is, and then if I go over here, once it's done talking and agreeing, it'll show up. And there we go, there's our ball. So now with our finger, we're going to fling the ball, okay? So as hard as you fling it is how what the speed's going to be. So I'm going to fling it. And there it goes. It's working. Should bounce off the edge and then, uh-oh. We don't want that. We want it to be able to bounce off the edges so we don't have to see it slowly stick to the side. Maybe I'll do it this time. Uh-oh. Something's not right. <sighs> Let's go on here. Hey, look, it already knew that was going to happen. So why does the ball get stuck to the side of the screen? Well, after we fling the ball against the screen, we never told it that we want it to bounce off the edge. 
So we're going to need to add something else in here <coughs> so that we know that when the ball reaches the edge, it's going to bounce. So let's go into that. So we're going to go to ball, and this time we're going to grab another event handler for dot edge reached. Ball, scroll up, edge reached. So what is it going to do when it reaches the edge? Let's go back. What we're going to do is we're going to get a call ball one to bounce off the edge. So we're going to go to ball, scroll down here, and we want it to bounce off the edge. Click. Now it's telling me, hey, that doesn't work. It's giving me an error. Why are we getting an error? There's nothing connected here. That's what we have to do next. So we, actually, we have to get the edge just like we did last time. So we're going to scroll. There it is again. We're going to scroll over slowly on edge, grab get edge, drag it in there, click. And now after five seconds, we're not going to see that again as long as we click off it. Now it knows that everything's working the way it's supposed to. So our final block should look like this. And they do. There's only one way to find out if this works, and that's test it out. So let's go back and let's test it out. So here's our ball moving. Let's see if I hit the edge, it should bounce. And it should be able to bounce off all four edges, and you should be able to see it bounce off all four edges. That means it works properly. So let's see if I can grab that. Got to find it at the right time. Bring it to the bottom. Bounce off the bottom. Perfect. There you go. Now, before you send me your file, you could get a little bit of crea creativity if you want. Go in the designer, change the color of the ball, maybe change the size of the ball. And, and what would be more fun is drag out another one. Okay? Have some fun with it. Try making a couple different ones. This one I will make a speed or... Um, I'll make this one 20, a little bigger, and I'll make this one blue. And now I have two balls on my screen. One's a little bigger, one's a little smaller, and I can have fun with these and see what happens. They should just scroll between each other, but you can set it so that um, the ball could bounce off each other. You could figure that out if you want to and play with all that information. So I didn't plan or I didn't program the second ball yet, but that's pretty easy. I can go into here and I can control C, control V, copy the entire first ball, and now just go here and change ball one to ball two. And I can do the same thing here, control C, control V, and I can get this one to also bounce off the edge. And now they both will work as they're supposed to, bouncing off each other. So if I want to do that, I certainly can. You can play around with it and have fun with it and then send me what you have once you're done. Okay, I did what I was supposed to. It's time to send it in. So I'm going to go to Projects. I don't have to do Save Project As. I already have my name there. I'm going to export the selected project to my computer, ballbounce underscore Brad. Open up my email. Okay. And again, I'm going to send it to Mr. Singer. I call it ball bounce app. Hello, Mr. Singer. Here is my ball bounce app. Enjoy. Have a chucky day. Click on it. Go find the ball bounce file. Man, I got a lot of files here. Hit open. Saves it. Send, and I'm done. Look, I got an email. Cool. I'll check it, and I'll get back to you. And that's it for this one. See you next time.